Hey look, it's a neutron star. One of the densest objects in the universe. Well, black holes may be denser, but if we're really trying to find a winner, then black holes win. Okay, but for real this time, what is a neutron star? Huh? A neutron star is a really, really, really super gigantic star. Except it ran out of gas. <laughs> Basically, the core collapses. Then outer layers are blown away. In this cool explosion called a supernova. And boom, you've got your neutron star. But, why is it called a neutron star? I'll pass the mic to my boy. As said earlier by Logan! the core collapses. Why does it collapse? Well, that's because of gravity. Because it is so massive, its own gravity pushes it into itself. We call this an implosion. Due to this, the atoms are mushed together and the protons and electrons are forced together to form neutrons. That's why it's called a neutron star. But this process doesn't always end up with a neutron star. In a neutron star, neutrons don't mush together because of the Pauli exclusion principle. What is the Pauli exclusion principle? Is this a promotion of school? Oh no, we are not telling you to exclude physicist Wolfgang Pauli. We are telling you to exclude fermions. Huh? Fermions are a category of subatomic particles that include protons, neutrons, and electrons. The other category is bosons, but you don't need to worry about that. Basically, Pauli says two fermions, neutrons in this case, because we are talking about neutron stars, don't want to be in the same spot at the same time. So trying to squish two neutrons together is almost impossible. But if the mass of the collapsing core exceeds four solar masses, meaning four times the mass of the sun, gravity would be so strong that poor Pauli would really be excluded because his rules don't work anymore and the particles mush together. Basically, if gravity is not strong enough, Pauli is victorious and you get yourself a neutron star. And if the gravity is too strong, Polly is excluded. And good luck trying to escape that black hole. There are two types of neutron stars, pulsars and magnetars. To understand pulsars, first we have to go back to 1967. Two astronomers named Anthony Hewish and Jocelyn Bell were observing the sky using a radio telescope when they found a strange light pulsing in the sky. This was actually a pulsar. So what is a pulsar? It's basically just a spinning neutron star that has powerful magnetic fields that channel streams of particles out of its two magnetic poles. I know that was confusing, so a good way to visualize this would be to picture a lighthouse. At night, they light up and spin, but you only actually see the beam when it is facing your direction. With the case of pulsars, we only actually see the beam when it is facing us. This gives off the illusion that it is pulsing. These beams emit radiation including little visible light and lots of x-rays, radio waves, and gamma rays. This diagram by NASA shows you the actual spinning pulsar and how it may look like it's pulsing. Next up, we've got magnetars. They're called a magnetar because their magnetic field is 1,000 times stronger than a typical neutron star. Don't forget that the Earth's magnetic field is trillions of times less than a normal neutron star. Neutron stars in general would rank number one in the entire universe if you compared its magnetic field to that of other stellar objects. Every neutron star's crust or outer layer is very unstable due to the immense gravitational pressure and any movement within it may be explosive. Their magnetic field and crust are linked together so if one is affected, the other is too. Now let's compare what will happen if there's an explosion on a pulsar's crust versus a magnetar's crust. For both the pulsar and the magnetar, the explosion in the crust will cause the magnetic field to fluctuate and release energy, just like how a star quake on the sun will cause solar flares. But because the magnetar's magnetic field is so much more powerful than the pulsar's, the energy released by its fluctuation will be much much greater than the energy released by that of a pulsar's magnetic field. If you somehow got close to one, its magnetic field would rip you apart on the atomic level. Ah! 
Hopefully, you remembered from earlier that neutron stars are one of the densest objects in the universe. Because we are about to dive in to an atom in As you can see, an atom has a nucleus of protons and neutrons and a bunch of tiny electrons whizzing around. This image is not up to scale. Let's make it up to scale. There we go. As you can see, atoms are 99.999% empty space. The nucleus takes up barely any space, but they make up almost all the mass of an atom. Now, in a neutron star, the nuclei would be squished together and all the empty space is gone. If you thought contains a lot of mass, think again. He is, in fact, mostly empty space. Let's say that is 250 pounds. Now this is merely hypothetical. I do not actually know how much he weighs. But anyways, if that's the case, one teaspoon of neutron star would weigh the same as 88 million on Earth. Also, because of the immense gravitational pressure, the surface of a neutron star can reach up to 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit, compared to our sun's measly 9,900. Neutron stars can also bend light due to this gravity. But unlike black holes, their gravity isn't strong enough to trap light. As said earlier, neutron stars have great magnetic fields. Moving electric charges produce magnetic fields and since the crust of neutron stars contain electrons and ions, which are electrically charged, electromagnetic currents excite these charged particles and makes them spin and move around a lot which gives them their magnetic field. Almost all stars spin and this spin also contributes to their magnetic field. When a massive star collapses to form a neutron star, they spin faster. It's similar to how a ballerina spins faster when they draw their arms in. Newborn neutron stars can spin up to 100 times per second. Anyway, the excitement of these charged particles also produces radiation, including visible light, which is why neutron stars shine. As stars get hotter, their color changes with the coolest being red and the hottest being blue. So neutron stars are blue because of how hot they are. Now, let's take a look inside a neutron star's core. Scientists don't really know what's in a neutron star's core. But there are two models that describe what may be in them. The first model, which is more likely for less massive neutron stars, says that the core consists of neutrons. The second model, which is more likely for more massive neutron stars, says that the core consists of a sea of quarks. Neutron stars are made up of neutrons, and as shown in the beginning of the video, neutrons consist of quarks which are elementary particles. The second model basically says that the pressure in a neutron star's core is so strong that the quarks are no longer restricted to the neutron and are now independent. Some speculate that the quarks in the core start to form strange quarks. Now what are strange quarks? Go ask Anyway, that's the end of our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.